What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Hyundai Palisade, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. Wanted to hop in this one today because there is actually one major change for the 2021 model year being a new trim level, which we are in today. So I am happy to be in this one. Of course, this is now the second model year that the Palisade has been out. So it does have a year under its belt now. And of course, with all Hyundais, you do have America's best warranty being five year, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain. Of course, that includes engine, transmission, drive shaft, stuff like that so it's always nice and starting february of 2020 hyundai now is offering three years 36,000 miles of free complimentary maintenance which is also going to save you some money so that's a big bonus too but having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels, of course, for the 2021 Hyundai Palisade. First one being the SE, starting at $33,665. SEL for $36,315. Then there is a decent jump up to the Limited for $46,265. And lastly, the Calligraphy, which is the new trim level that we have here today for 2021. This one starts at $48,890. And so for those first three trim levels, excluding the calligraphy trim level, that will all be front wheel drive standard setup. You can add all wheel drive for an additional $1,700. However, the trim that we have today does come standard with all wheel drive. So I did want to mention that as well. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on this one will be the same. Powering the Palisade will be a 3.8 liter direct injected V6, putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque available at 5,200 RPM, power center front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here. And overall, zero to 60 time will come in at approximately 6.9 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 19 in the city, 26 highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 on the highway for the all wheel drive configuration, but either way, taking regular unleaded fuel so you don't have to put in the high test or premium unleaded so that's always good but so then before we do that paddle shifter test or acceleration test for that matter i did want to mention there are of course some driving modes for the palisade they will include comfort eco sport snow and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity and there is also an all-wheel drive lock button as well which i have used quite often on my hyundai santa fe when it starts snowing out all of those buttons by the way are on a circular dial located just to the right of the drive buttons and by the way to actually shift whether it be putting the palisade in reverse drive neutral whatever it is simply a button setup located just to the left of those drive mode buttons so I would have mentioned that as well but having said all that though what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode and by the way does also alter the digital gauge cluster so i now have a bunch of red hues a very cool looking gauge cluster now we'll get more into that later but let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here first want to see how quickly they react for us and by the way they do feel very high end as well i do like that but anyways let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and we'll see how quickly they react for us here all right here we go first gear okay they're quick. I will say that they are actually quick, believe it or not, in an SUV. You don't always get that. So it kind of surprised me, but dang, I just noticed the RPM gauge is backwards than what I think just about every other car out there that I'm used to, I guess. Usually as you go up in the RPMs, 1,000 to 8,000, it goes clockwise. However, in the Palisade, when you go up in the RPMs, it actually goes counterclockwise that is probably honestly the first time i've ever seen that in a vehicle not sure why hyundai did that it's probably something you would get used to but dang did that throw me off for a second there i thought everything was backwards <laughs> that was so weird anyways now that we have done that paddle shifter test let's go ahead and give back full control to the palisade and let's do a quick little acceleration test here and let's see how quickly the palisade is going to get us up to speed all right here we go, a bit of a rolling start, but don't pull out for me. Thank you. Here we go. Whoa. Yeah, that's not bad. You know, it's got 300 horsepower, and although it is a larger three row SUV, most definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. That was plenty fine. 
plenty of acceleration here in the Palisades, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.4 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero braking distance goes, it actually comes in at 129 feet, which is a little bit slower than a lot of the competition. For example, the Honda Pilot comes in at 120 feet. Toyota Highlander, a little bit worse than that. Volkswagen Atlas comes in at 139, so it's better than that. But having said that, the braking feel is a little bit on the soft side so i did want to mention that with the palisade it's not bad it's definitely something you get used to my hyundai santa fe has the same soft braking field so it's just something you get used to that's all then touching on suspension and handling up front you will find mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars and i will say as far as the steering feel goes it is a pretty substantial difference dependent upon the driving mode that you actually put the palisade in for example, when I put it in that sport driving mode that I still have it in, the steering feel feels nice. I will say it's pretty much as expected there. Nice, heavier weight to it, but if I were to take it out of that and put it in smart driving mode, man, it is loosey-goosey. I could definitely tell you guys that. Not a whole lot of feel to the steering, so do want to mention that to you guys. If you like a heavier steering feel, just put it in sport driving mode. But in addition to that, when it comes to ride quality, Hyundai has always done a very good job when it comes to ride quality. Even without an adaptive suspension, even without an air suspension, ride quality is perfectly fine. So definitely no issues there for me at least. Touching on cabin noise, that is actually perfectly fine for me as well. And that's partly due because the Palisade does come with an acoustic laminated front windshield and front side glass as well. So that of course is going to deaden a lot of the exterior sound coming into the cabin. So therefore cabin noise, I can tell you is definitely above average for this segment there. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back but i do want to mention you do have the ability to push down those headrests in the third row if not in use that is what i did so therefore that's going to assist with a little better visibility there with the headrest up of course that will block visibility a little bit more but rain sensing windshield wipers actually come standard on the limited and calligraphy trim levels if you wanted them essentially turns on the windshield wipers whenever the palisade detects any kind of mist or rainfall or anything like that one less thing you got to worry about there any head-up display will come with a limited and calligraphy as well, and therefore that is what I am actually currently looking at right now. It is displaying my current speed as well as the speed limit of any given road, so it just better helps you keep your eyes on the road. And again, that's a safety feature in itself. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Hyundai Palisade. All right, here she is, you guys. The new 2021 Hyundai Palisade finished in hyper white. In case anybody was curious about the color name, let's go ahead and start up front on this one because this front grille is actually going to be unique to the limited and calligraphy trim levels. So it's going to look slightly different if you were to go with one of the other trim levels. So I did want to mention that to start. Also down below, you're going to get front skid plates if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy trim levels as well. That is what you guys are currently looking at right now. Then to the sides, projector style headlights coming with the SE and SEL trim levels, LED headlights with the limited and calligraphy and that of course is what we got here and you will also get unique front lighting for the calligraphy as well so it's going to be a little bit different than the other trim level so i do want to mention that too automatic headlights come standard across the board led accent lighting standard as well and led daytime running lights basically to round out the front let's go ahead and make our way now to the side of the palisade so now since we are around the side here, roof rails do come standard for the SEL trim level and up. Rear privacy glass coming on all trim levels, body color door handles on the SE. However, you will get satin chrome door handles for the SEL trim level and up. And SEL and up will also give you door handle welcome lights. That is pretty cool effect at night. Side mirror puddle lights coming with the limited and calligraphy. And that's going to be another LED light feature you're going to be able to see at night, not so much in the daytime right now. Then taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors across the board with LED integrated turret signals for the SEL trim level and up. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. This is probably the easiest way to spot the new calligraphy trim level. And that's because 18 inch alloys come with the SE and SEL trim levels and then 20 inch alloys 
for the limited and calligraphy. However, those styles will differ. For example, this wheel design is specific to the calligraphy trim level. So that is what that is going to look like. And another thing I actually wanted to mention to you guys, the lower trim levels of the Palisade, this will actually come in matte black, the fender surrounds there. However, on the calligraphy, those will be body colored. So I do want to mention that as well. But so then now making our way to the back, there is actually a shark fin antenna up top there finished in gloss black, but just below that rear spoiler with integrated brake light across the board, just below that rear window wiper. Of course you have the Palisade lettering spelled out horizontally. It gives it a very high end effect there. You do have the H track badging found on the right side of that rear tailgate there. That is referring to Hyundai's all wheel drive system. Of course, every manufacturer has to name it. Like Audi has Quattro, Mercedes Benz has Formatic, Hyundai has H track in case anybody was curious about that. Rear skid plates come with the limited and calligraphy trim levels to tie in with the front skid plates, of course. LED taillights coming with, again, the limited and calligraphy. And just below it all, you will get a single exhaust outlet, however, with dual tips. And that does come standard across the board. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next, as always, here is that exhaust clip. And so now since we are around back of the Palisade, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a hands-free power lift gate for the limited and calligraphy trim levels. So I did want to mention that there is a button on the lift gate itself, also a button on the key fob if you wanted to as well. And again, it's hands-free for the limited and calligraphy. Once opened up behind that third row, cargo capacity comes in at 18 cubic feet even. If that was not enough space behind that second row, that's gonna bump it up to 45.8 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, 86.4 cubic feet. So for comparison's sake, Honda Pilot comes in at 83.9, Toyota Highlander 84.3. So it does beat out those two SUVs. So I just wanted to do that for a little comparison for you guys. But also in that cargo area, there is a 12 volt power outlet. There is some in-floor storage as well. And there is a cargo cover, which is currently in the in-floor storage, but you can take that out and use it for the cargo area if you wanted to. So that's always an option. And overall, it was super easy to fold those seats down. So definitely no issues there either for me. Making our way now to the rear legroom though that is going to come in at 31.4 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in that third row did want to also mention there is rear ventilation that comes standard across the board for all three rows it's actually going to be located on the roof of the palisade and there is a reclining third row as well for a little added comfort there also third row usb charging ports for the limited and calligraphy this is especially important if you have kids in that third row because because of course they want to have their tablets and smartphones charged up so that's definitely a big plus there and by the way to get to that third row it's actually just one button that you touch on the second row seat to have access to that third row if you wanted to get in that way that is because of course you can just hop in the side and then run up the center if you go with the captain's chair set up and by the way that leads me to the second row and so you will get bench seating if you go with the se trim level it's going to be optional on the sel However, Captain's Chairs does come standard for the SEL trim level and up, so therefore I did want to mention that. But as far as that second row legroom goes, that comes in at 42.4 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. And I got to tell you guys, that is a ton of rear legroom, by the way. And if you wanted a little more legroom in that third row, you of course can slide that second row forward a little bit because there is a good bit of legroom in the second row. So that's another way you can make a little bit of extra space in that third row. But Heated rear seats actually come with the limited and calligraphy if you want to spoil those rear passengers a bit. That's pretty cool. Ventilated rear seats. That's a big one, you guys. Coming with the limited and calligraphy. A lot of times luxury automakers don't even have ventilated rear seats. They have heated rear seats, but not always ventilated. So that's pretty cool that the Palisade offers that on those two trim levels. Second row automatic climate control comes with the SEL trim level and up, meaning the second row passengers can set their own temperatures if they wanted to. Rear window sunshades coming with the limited and calligraphy. It's going to be optional on the SEL, but that's especially important, especially 
when you're taking a newborn home from the hospital. We'll say that because it always feels like the sun is blinding them on the drive home. So second row sunshades are a big plus for things like that. USB charging ports in that second row as well. And overall seats were plenty comfortable for me. And again, I just think it's crazy that the second row has heated and ventilated rear seats. It's pretty darn cool. And not to mention, they have their own panoramic moonroof back there as well. And I'll get more into that later in the video, but it's pretty cool too. But make your way now to the front seats, cloth seating with the SE and SEL, premium Napa leather with the limited and calligraphy, six-way power driver seat with the SE, eight-way power driver seat with the SEL trim level and up with two-way power lumbar for that as well, by the way. Then if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, that also adds four-way power lumbar, a leg cushion extension, an eight-way power adjustable passenger seat as well, memory settings for up to two different drivers as well up front here. That is definitely nice. And you do get heated front seats with the SEL trim level and up and ventilated front seats with the limited and calligraphy once again. So overall, again, seating was actually plenty comfortable for me. I was kind of hesitant because I didn't really know how the top part of the design, the quilted look was going to feel on my back, but it's plenty fine, honestly. So no issues with seat comfort there. Did take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels, leather wrapped for the SEL and up perforated leather wrapped for the calligraphy that is yet another unique feature to this particular trim level that we have today and it will come heated for the limited and calligraphy as well then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the circular hold button in the middle there that is actually a remote start for this calligraphy trim level as well so you could heat up the palisade or cool it down depending on the temperature outside so you're completely comfortable when you finally get inside but to actually start this one up what I am going to do at least is simply put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the bottom right hand corner of the gauges there and that is going to be found on the SEL trim level and up in case you wanted that but once started up the gauges are going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with i was mentioning it earlier 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster coming with the limited and calligraphy trim level so that is currently what you guys are looking at right now it will not be a digital gauge cluster if you go with the other trim so i did want to mention that but this digital gauge cluster is definitely quite nice i will say that speedometer all the way to the left tachometer on your right and of course it's all digital you can completely customize it like i was saying earlier if you change the drive mode that is going to change the colors up there eco mode is going to give you green hue sport mode is going to give you red and of course smart mode is going to look like what is currently on the screen right there but to adjust what is on that digital gauge cluster is also steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side there that is going to take you through a bunch of different information information there is your attention level system up there it tells you how attentively you are driving at any given time that's pretty cool tire pressure information what drive mode you're in and there's really just a ton of different things you can completely customize up there so yeah i completely love this digital gauge cluster. It's definitely pretty advanced, I will say that. We'd say they make your way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof comes with the limited and calligraphy. And of course, we do have that panoramic roof for the rear passengers as well. Home link controls for the SEL trim level and up. That's for up to three different garage doors. But perhaps one of my favorite features about this specific calligraphy trim level is the upscale suede-like headliner. And so the Telluride top trim has this as well. And now the calligraphy has it and I absolutely love it. You find these headliners, I know on Genesis, Hyundai's luxury brand, they're in that, but it's also in cars like McLaren, like Ferrari, Lamborghini. They have these headliners, so I love that the Palisade has it. It's a very high-end look, and it's the little things that impress me like that. But anyways, wireless phone charger comes with limited in calligraphy as well as 64 different colors of ambient lighting. That is pretty darn cool. There is an in-car intercom system for the limited and calligraphy as well. And that's always fun to play around with, of course. Let me show you guys. Can you guys hear me in the back? I am Gold Pony. I review cars on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and like this video for more. That was the worst pitch I've ever done in my life. I am sorry. And so then there is also a rear seat quiet mode that comes for all trim levels. Essentially what that is, is when the kids fall asleep in the second and third rows, and you still wanna to listen to music or radio or whatever in the front, it completely blocks out the rear speakers and limits the volume in the front. So you can still hear things, but the kids are less likely to wake up in the back. So that's a pretty cool little feature there as well. And overall, when it comes to interior quality, I actually like it. I do prefer 
prefer the lighter color interior in the Palisade, but having said that, I like the way Hyundai did the black interior with the black accenting just above the passenger side glove box that ties into the doors. And of course, the ambient lighting looks absolutely amazing. Hopefully you guys are able to see that decently. I tried to find the woods, so I have a little bit of shade to show that to you guys, but that is definitely pretty nice as well. Whatever this trim is around all of these buttons in front of the cup holders there, I definitely like that too. It's definitely not going to show any fingerprints like a lot of other gloss black trim does in other manufacturers and I feel like it's not going to scratch easy as well it's definitely very nice but so anyways in the middle of it all you will find two cup holders which by the way can be pushed kind of to the side if you just wanted to use that for storage that's a pretty cool little setup there to the left of that you got that wireless phone charger again just for the limited and calligraphy one of the cool things I found on the Palisade here is just underneath of all of that you do have some ambient lighting but you also have a good bit of storage for maybe a purse or something you kind of wanted to put out of the way so people are less likely to see. There's actually a 12 volt power outlet and USB charging port down underneath there as well. So I was kind of surprised, kind of nice to see that there. And of course, underneath that center armrest, you have a decent amount of storage there. Yet another 12 volt power outlet and USB charging port and a little removable tray there as well. But really, when it comes down to it, as far as interior quality goes, it's really all about the attention to detail with the Palisade, for example all the little knobs that you can turn they all have a nice little unique design to them kind of a texturized design and that ties in also with the aluminum handle for the passenger side glove box that unique design is on that as well of course you have the diamond pattern quilted leather found on the doors that is also on the upper portion of the seats that definitely looks nice there overall it's just a very high-end feel and look to the interior of the Palisade and especially this calligraphy trim level that we have here today. So very nice interior quality on the Palisade, I will say that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display front and center. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE and SEL trims, 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the limited and calligraphy. Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming and you still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well. Even with the SE, I love that the Palisade offers that because that of course gives you free navigation display up on that display. So you don't even have to get the factory navigation if you didn't want it. And by the way, factory navigation does come standard on the 10 and a quarter inch screen only but again you don't need it as long as you have a smartphone so that's always there for you. you can of course check out your climate control settings up there as well then you can also access that quiet mode up here that driver talk system as well and you can adjust the ambient lighting up here and even better one of the coolest things I always like on Hyundai's lately they've been doing this there's a little icon labeled sounds of nature and so with that you can choose lively forest calm sea waves rainy day open air cafe and warm fireplace and so I'm going to leave it on lively forest but I did want to play all these for you guys just so you can hear them I think it's so freaking cool the Hyundai put it on there I know it's just a simple thing but it's different so let me let you guys listen to that real quick And so, but then in addition to that, of course, you could check out your radio settings up on that tech display. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get six speakers with the SE and SEL. Then with the limited and calligraphy, you're gonna get a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 630 watts. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Well, more than enough bass you would need in a three row SUV. I will say that, but clarity was definitely on point. Plenty of wattage, plenty of loudness. That is really overkill of a sound system for the Palisade, but I absolutely love it, of course. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is of course, when you do put the Palisade in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board, surround view monitor coming with the limited and calligraphy, letting you know what is everywhere around you, an aerial view, if you will. So you don't go 
running anything or anyone over, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the Hyundai Palisade is an IIHS top safety pick. That's always a good start. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In addition to that, a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard across the board, rear parking sensors, rear occupant alert, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane following assist, lane keep assist. And Hyundai probably has one of the best lane keep assist systems that I've tested recently. Definitely keeps you in the lane very, very well. We'll say that. Also that driver attention warning system I was mentioning to you guys. SEL trim level and up is also going to add a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert if you wanted that. And the limited trim level and up is also going to add front parking sensors and highway drive assist, which is Hyundai's form of essentially automated driving more or less. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Palisade, the calligraphy is definitely a nice addition for 2021. Great tech on this one. I will say that Hyundai has really been killing it with tech lately, both on their infotainment screens and this digital gauge cluster. So I absolutely love that. Ambient lighting is wonderful. A lot of other manufacturers will put ambient lighting, but it'll just be one color. But with the Palisade, you have 64 different colors. You can make it pink in here, blue, green, whatever. That's freaking cool. Decent amount of space in this one as well. That's always a big plus. My only constructive criticism really for the Palisade to make it absolutely perfect is to increase the braking feel a little bit. It is on the softer side and also the steering feel as well. And although there is that sport mode that does help the steering feel that comes with that increased acceleration and therefore lower fuel economy so i would have liked the steering feel just to be better without the rest of it essentially so that is what i'm saying there but overall i'm still an absolute huge fan of the palisade let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of this one that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Rain sensing windshield wipers, there's no rain. Why are you turning on? Most definitely not gonna have any issues, Marco.